Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's about to be a good Sunday this morning. Look at your neighbor, tell them I am breaking ground. Tell them I am planted and I am not buried. Hallelujah. Tell them I am breaking ground. I am planted and I am not buried. Hallelujah. So far we've been in this series. How many of you guys have enjoyed this breaking ground series so far? Come on, come on, come on. Those online, make sure you can just view it on from YouTube or wherever. Um, you can go and catch up on the series. It's been a phenomenal series so far that we started off the year. What a better way, you know, when they say when you have to break ground. We're starting off the year in the right way, right? Because some of us don't realize, as we spoke last week, where the Bible comes and says, those who are planted in the house of the Lord will... Will... Come on, some of you... Who hasn't listened to last week's sermon? Come on. <laughs> those who are planted in the house of the Lord will will flourish. Hallelujah. And also the fact that God wants us to be ever green. Hallelujah. In and out of season for you and me to produce fruit, fruit in and out of season. And that's just what our Father can do. But we are back here with another Sunday. If you are here for the very first time, I want to welcome you warmly to Crossover City Church. It's going to be a good Sunday. We believe God is about to speak to you. And I believe what is critical in our Christian walk is the fact that we must not just be Christians that are information driven. Am I speaking to someone this morning? I said we must not just be believers that are information driven, but information which God comes and gives us must lead to application which we go and put in, and this will then lead us to transformation. I'm going to say it again. Information which God gives us through His Word then attaches itself to application that we put in, and the end result of that is us having transformation into the image of Jesus Christ. Amen? So that's one of the key points I want you to remember this morning in what God is doing here, because God is not just bringing you information. He's saying the responsibility to apply this is in you if you really want to see the fruit of my word in your life. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that God desires you to have fruit? How many of you guys believe that God desires you to have fruit? God desires for you to progress. God desires for you to carry something of significance, right? God desires to take you from level to level. Hallelujah. God desires to take you from glory to glory. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that God desires of you to cross over? You've got, you've, you've got to say it because you must understand it's in the atmosphere right now. And whatever is spoken in the atmosphere, if it's not caught, you will not be able to get it in your life. Amen. I'm here to tell you this morning that the heavens are open. Those who are in person and online, the heavens are open. And God is ready to download something fresh to you this morning. But if you don't catch it, if you don't respond to it, you're not going to get it, right? Hallelujah. So, um, I'm going to go to our first scripture reading this morning. Psalm 34 verse 8. Psalm 34 verse 8. If you can just go there to me. Psalm 34 verse 8. What does the Bible say there? Let's read it together. I'm going to leave it right there. The Bible is quite clear on this. It says, don't just read my word. Taste it feed on it. Allow the word to be part of you because the only way that you will understand that the Lord is good is when this word is tasted. Am I speaking to someone here this morning? So Malachi 3 verse 10 comes and says, God even says, test me on this. Amen. Test me on this because the blessing I want to release over your life is a blessing that is so big and so massive that you will not be able to contain it. This is the God that I serve. Not just the God of enough, but the God of more than enough. Do you believe it this morning? Because God wants you planted not just on the outside, but God wants you planted on the inside. Because oil only flows on what is authentic and not what is necessarily just presented. If you want the anointing to flow in your life, God needs you to be authentic. 
God can only work with the real you. He cannot work with something that you try to present on the outside that is not real. Because the favor of God will never arrive at a place where you pretend to be at, but rather at a place where you really are and where you are planted. Am I speaking to someone this morning? Because you must understand, when we, when we went to Sonas and uh, many of you guys who don't know, <clears throat> so uh, tomorrow um, my inheritance is coming. Come on, somebody. Uh, come on, come on, somebody. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. CJ is on his way tomorrow. So just keep your pasting prayer tomorrow morning um, as I'm about to suffer and go through a, quite a crazy experience. When we went for sonas, one of the things that you realize a doctor tries to tell you is they always measure the head. And I don't know about you, but my wife and I is pretty real. So when we went for the 4D scan, one of the things we saw right there is that the kid had quite a big head. Guys, I'm real. Like we, we like real. And my wife and I was already trying to identify what part of the family is this from. And I'm telling my wife, love, you have the helmet, yeah? You know, you have the helmet here, yeah? you know, and we, when we always, but what you realize with the sonas is that we measure the growth of the baby according to the weeks, according to the month. So if the baby is six months, it's a certain weight the baby has to be, etc. But with this also comes the fact that there's sometimes where the baby grows to an extent where the baby, the, the body develops faster than the organs. I don't know if you know that. So the body comes in and develops faster than the organs. What then comes in and takes place is the fact that the doctor then signals that there's a problem because the organs need to grow with the size of the baby. And I'm here to tell you this morning that this series is about to reveal to you to tell you that some of us are bigger on the outside than what we actually are on the inside. And we appear to be big on the outside by the way we try and project ourselves. But on the inside, our capacity, our character, our integrity is not at the same size as what you try to appear on the outside and I see this a lot I always see people posting big captions building a million air empire you can't even buy airtime your outside appearance is much bigger than what's on the inside and I'm here to tell you right now that some of us are trying to come at the place and the space we are and remember I said you must identify where you are at are you at sea time are you at time which is the process or are you at harvest and some of you will get confused based on where you are at because you are trying to manifest something but you are not necessarily there as yet and that's why you'll be frustrated. I wonder who's asking God to give them a bigger stage because the gift is bigger than your insights. I'm speaking to someone that understands that everyone seems mature until. Am I speaking to someone? Everyone seems mature until. Everybody seems strong until the pandemic comes and it hits us. Everyone seems in control until you find a taxi crossing you in the traffic. Everybody seems matured until something happens. And this morning our foundational scripture is going to come from the book of Matthew 8 verse 23 to 26. Matthew 8 verse 23 to 26. And I want us to understand here what's currently happening in this particular scripture. The Bible here comes and reveals to us, it says, Jesus got onto the boat. And started across the lake with his disciples. Suddenly, somebody say a fear storm. Somebody say a fear storm. Somebody say a fear storm. Came and it struck the lake. But the waves breaking into the boat. With the waves breaking into the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. Somebody say Jesus was sleeping. <clears throat> I believe naps are important. How many of you guys can agree with me there? Just say Amen. Say naps are important. And so this is one of the parts that we, that, we, that we are basically describing here. But I want us to actually be right here in this moment. See, I just want you just to, I'm going to just create a bit of drama here this morning. I want you guys just to, so, so suddenly the fear storm starts breaking out. And Jesus was sleeping. And as he was sleeping, the storm was going. And the next part of the scripture comes and it reveals to us that the disciples, don't worry, your pastor's like that. 
So the disciples are in this boat and they are panicking. Come on, we can make some drama. You guys can, you guys can give me some of that, right? So <clears throat> the disciples are in the place right here where they are seeing what's happening and the storm is breaking and they are losing. Go back to the scripture for me real quickly. And they are in a panic mode because Jesus, you are busy sleeping right here. The next part of the scripture comes and it says there, the disciples went down and woke here and said, Lord, save us. We are going to drown, right? Next part comes and it says, Jesus responded, why are you so afraid, you of little faith? Then he got up, rebuked the wind and the waves, and suddenly where there was a great calm. But what I love here is, I'm going to go to James 5 verse 18. James 5 verse 18 is the second part because these two scriptures come in and it complements one another. The Bible says here, then he prayed again, the sky went. You know what it says? Then when he prayed again, the sky sent down rain and the earth began to yield its crops. Matthew James. So what do we see with the two corresponding right here? The one where the, where the winds and the waves and everything is coming and the storm is right there. On the other side, we come in and we find that James comes and says, then he prayed again and the sky sent down rain, but this time rain was for the earth to start yielding crops. So a furious storm starts breaking out while Jesus is sleeping. How many of you guys have experienced a furious storm before? If you're on a boat, it's even worse because... The, the, the land still kind of stops things, but if you once, once you are on the sea, it's another story. So, on the one side, he starts equipping himself, right? I'm just imagining these guys know exactly what to do as they are on this way, right? They know exactly what to experience because these guys are trained. This is Peter and all of these guys, you know, and as they are in this, they have a furious storm that breaks out. It's raining. How many of you guys have experienced something that's hostile? Something that's chaotic? So, the wind is blowing. The rain is all over the place. Lights is flashing. But the Bible says that he is resting. I'm looking at this. I'm like, are you serious right now? So, who feels like you are currently in a storm? Let's just be real. Like you feel that this is a place where you are all the time. The boat is shaking, Mr. Shan, but the king is resting. I said the boat is shaking, but the king is resting. The heavens comes and it releases its rain for the earth to produce its fruit. And I'm here to tell someone in 2023, if you want to have fruit in your life, if you want to progress in your life, if you want to become something great in 2023, you actually have to ask God and say, Father, send the rain. Because some of you are in the place where you are asking God for something, but the book of James is showing me something here about rain. That some of us are in the place where we might be like the disciples in the season where we are in, and the rain, we are actually asking the king to stop it, but God has placed you in the place of James, where God is saying, I need to open up the weather. I need to open up the heaven so that it can start raining. God wants us to grasp the power of the problem in routine. And God says, as long as you remain planted, you must not rely on your feelings. Because I've planted you there for a reason, so that you can send the rain. Look at your neighbor, say, Father, send the rain. This is not the place you fold. This is not the place you throw in the towel. This is not the place you give up. This is not the place where you walk away because I'm here to tell you that your feelings are not Lord to where God has planted you because feelings are wonderful visitors, but they are terrible landlords. I know it's hard. Stay. I know it's uncomfortable. Stay. I know they're talking about you. Stay. I know you don't see the fruit, but you cannot quit because the Bible shows us that those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish and you don't understand that your planting right now is not just for you because your planting is for generations to come am i speaking to someone this morning your planting is for those who come behind you to start benefiting because maybe one day it will be said of you that my ancestors left me fruit and godliness instead of debt and shame because some of you right now are reaping the fruits of the debt and the shame your predecessors left you because they never remained planted. But being planted is not just for you, it's for those coming behind you. 
Because you don't understand that what you are doing right now, your next is tied to your now. And you think it is re it's useless. You think it doesn't reap any fruit. But God is trying to tell you that your next is directly aligned to the routine. Your next is directly aligned to the habits. Your next is directly aligned to the patterns. Your next is directly aligned to the decisions that you make right now. Because everything that we do carries fruit. And some of you are trying to consume fruit you have not planted. How you will end up looking like in June 2023 will be a direct result of what you ate in January 2023. I'm going to say it again. How you end up looking on the outside in, 2000, in June 2023 will be a direct connotation to what you ate in January 2023. Whatever you eat in private, you will end up wearing in public. But God is in the place where God says, son and daughter, I just want to bring a change of perspective to you this morning. Because in adversity, there's some peace on the inside. In your trauma, there's some peace on the inside. In your chaos, there's some peace on the inside. Because peace is not something that God wants you to experience in the outside. Peace is something that God wants you to experience on the inside. Am I speaking to someone here this evening? Am I speaking to someone here this morning? Because you must understand how my God works. My God works in paradigm shifts. Because you might not know this, but bad weather produces good fruit. Hear what I'm saying? Bad weather produces good fruit. What may, may look like bad weather based on where you are planted. You are seeing the waves. You are seeing the storm. You are seeing the rain. You are seeing the lightning. But you're not understanding that you need the rain in order for you to produce fruit. Am I speaking to someone this morning? Because God will use bad weather conditions. Hey. And some of you are thinking you're in a bad season but you're just in bad weather. We look at the Northern Cape, we experience droughts all the time. And when the rain comes to some, it's a blessing, but the farmers understand, some it's a curse, but the farmers understand it's a huge blessing. Because when we are dry, we are dry. But I'm here to ask you, what's the state of your spirit? What's the state of your spirit? Because every single time... The rain wants to come, you run away. Every single time conflict arises, you run away. Every single time things get tough at that job, you run away. Every single time things get tough at your family, you run away. Every single time things seem like it's a bit chaotic, you end up running away. But I'm asking you the question this morning, is that the reason why you are still in drought? Because problems will always entangle itself with the promises. I said problems will always entangle itself with the promises. You thinking you're just going to get the promise without any problems. Hey, Rabbi Asha. Matthew 8 verse 18. Matthew 8 verse 18. Jesus comes in and he tells the disciples, we are done here. We need to get to the other side. And some of you are in the place where you want to cross over from one place to the next place. But the disciples did not know, even though the Savior knew, we are about to experience a storm. We're not just getting to the other side like you think we are. We are about to encounter a storm. Jesus knew the storm was coming. The disciples didn't know. And I'm here to tell you today, the only way you will have fruit is when you have rain. Because some of us this year will have fruit only when the rain comes. Because there are certain things the storm will teach you. <laughs> that a Sunday sermon will not teach you. I said there are certain things that the storm will teach you. That a motivational teaching will not teach you. There's something that a storm will teach you that you just going into the prayer closet will not be able to teach you. There's something that the storm will teach you that nothing else in this world can teach you but the experience you are going through at that moment. Am I speaking to someone? Because the storm is in the place and the storm is there to mold us because only the storm and the rain can teach you at that moment. And when I'm looking at rain, I see the acronym removing all immature notions because you must understand the storm is not just there for you to come in and to allow you to grow, but the storm is there because the storm also comes in and it washes you. Have you ever looked at it in that way? Because the storm is also there to wash you. 
and cleanse you. Because some of you are in the place where you are pity. Some of you are in the place where you are struggling with insecurities. Some of you are in the place where you are struggling with laziness, where you struggle with throwing in the towel. But God says, I don't want you just in the place where you can grow, but I want you in the place where my waters, my living waters can wash you from all of this insecurities, can wash you from the negativity, can wash you from all the fallacies, can wash you from all the insecurities, can wash you from whatever sickness and disease you may be in because the rain is not just for growth the rain is to cleanse me as well ah, anything that is not like God Father God just tell yourself Father wash it away wash it away you want the fruit but the rain is necessary look at yourself say self yourself will look back and say hmm Say the rain is necessary. Say the rain is necessary. The rain is necessary. You are battling depression. I'm here to tell you the rain is necessary. You are struggling with oppression. I'm here to tell you the rain is necessary. Because while you are in that, the Bible even brings a part of scripture where it says, count it all joy. Because there's something the rain will teach you that other things just won't. But I know wherever you may find yourself, God wants you to bring it to a place where you experience His presence. And you experience the Holy Spirit throughout every single season. So when you come into this church, when you come into wherever, you will have an experience of healing. You will have an experience of deliverance. You will have an experience and a revelation that will change your life forever. Because if you leave here unchanged, it's on you. Because what did I say in the beginning? You receive information, but without the application, your life will never lead to transformation. God is raising up a generation of intercessors. Do we believe that? I said, God is raising up a generation of worshipers. Do we believe that? I said, God is raising up revivalists. Do we believe that? But what do you do while you are in the middle of the storm? I'm here to tell you this morning, enjoy the rain. <laughs> Look at your neighbor, tell them, I'm going to enjoy the rain. Because the issue with some of us is while the rain is, forming, is falling, we are missing the blessing of the rain because we are focusing too much on the mud that the rain has caused. Rabbah, come on. Father, I want to get to the other side. But Jesus is saying it's about to rain. And he's saying, son and daughter, the rain is necessary. Because you don't just get fruit. God plants seeds. And many of you are in the place where you are saying, Father God, open up the floodgates of heaven. We sing these songs, right? Open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain. But rain is a mess. <laughs> rain brings with it its own problems. Because while you are planted, you are over... Some, some, some leaves just fall off because of the rain. But we don't understand that it's necessary. Somebody say it's necessary. Farmers will tell you, harvest season is work season. Amen. Harvest season is uncomfortable. It's long hours. It's hard labor. And some of us are in the place where we just want to get, 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 but we don't realize we are small babies wanting big things on the outside, but on the inside we are still small. And God is saying, son and daughter, I need you to grow up and mature. Ah, we despise the storm. We end up questioning God. We end up asking, does God even love me? Does God even care? Let's look at it in this perspective. What may seem like a curse to you is actually a blessing in disguise. Some people experience rain in two ways because the issue here is we think that God is just the God of sunlight. But we don't realize that God is also the God of the rain. But the type of rain you get is based on where you are positioned and planted within God. When Jonah came in the place and God gave him an instruction to go out and judge Nineveh, the Bible says that Jonah went his own direction, ran away from what God told him, found the boat, got on the boat, and then a storm came and the rain hit him as a judgment because of his rebellion. But then the Bible also comes and reveals to us that there's another man by the name of Noah, Rabbah Shah, that Noah comes in the place where the Bible says that God says, build a boat because I'm about to send rain onto this earth to come and cleanse it. And we find out that the very same storm, that the very same rain that was a curse and that was a, because Noah, Jonah was in rebellion, is now the very same rain that ends up being the savior and the very same rain that ends up being the thing that actually saves Noah and his family. 
family because of obedience. So you get rain in your life where the rain will be caused because of your rebellion, but then you also get rain in your life where the rain is caused because of your obedience. Am I speaking to someone here? Are you guys seeing this difference at what can happen? Because everybody wants fruit but not rain. Maybe we should stop rebuking what God actually sent. God is doing surgery because without the rain, even plants experience death. And storms are necessary. Somebody say storms are necessary. Storms are the orientation for fruit production. Rain is the enrollment for the mature. Rain is the transportation that takes us from being underneath to above. You must understand because in one season of a tree, what it's standing above is now what it is what it used to be underneath. <laughs> Let me say it again. You don't realize, but a tree, what it is above right now is something that it used to be underneath in a previous season. And what I'm trying to say here is you will never be a leader unless you are an effective follower. Because there is wisdom in between the drops of rain. Once you have gone through a storm and survived, next time you can come in and you can face it with a different perspective. And I'm going to come in and close off this message right here. Matthew 8 comes and reveals to us a powerful revelation of how Peter grew. Peter's in the storm with the disciples, right? In Matthew 8, the Bible says the storm is coming and the storm is breaking out. And Peter being in the storm with the disciples says, Father, I'm afraid. What's going to happen? Jesus is sleeping, right? Quickly go to me to Matthew 14, verse 22. To 36. What I'm going to do right here with this particular scripture, I'm going to bring us to the next part of Peter's journey because here we actually find a different side to Peter we've never seen. Immediately after Jesus, in, after this, Jesus insisted that the disciples go back into the boat and cross the lake to the other side, while he sent the people home, next portion says, after sending them home, we went up to the hills to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Next verse, next verse is, Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from the land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. Right? So that, that what we find in Matthew 8 and Matthew 14, that there's another waves, and that's again strong waves that they are busy fighting. About 3 o'clock the morning, Jesus came towards them walking on water. Right? About while, when the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified in fear. They cried out, It's a ghost but jesus spoke to them at once and says don't be afraid take courage for yeah i am next portion says then peter called to him so the very same peter that while in matthew 8 he was in the place where he shouted out to jesus why are you sleeping i'm afraid of the storm that is here can you wake up jesus responds to him hey, hey you of little faith is the very same Peter we find now in Matthew 14. That another storm breaks out while they are in a boat. And Peter comes to him. And the Bible says they were afraid. Jesus comes in there and he, he starts walking on the water. The disciple says, is this a ghost? Peter's response here is, Lord, if that is really you, I'm going to come to you and I'll walk on water. Are you guys seeing the pattern of what is happening right here between these two scriptures? It's the fact that the very same Peter that was scared in the previous chapter is now a Peter that is filled with faith in the next chapter. And Peter didn't just say, I'm going to wait for the miraculous. He said, I'm not just going to see this again because I will not allow myself to go through another pandemic to go through another death, to go through another trauma, to go through more chaos, to go through more trauma, to go through all of these things and respond the same. Because the first time I responded and I said, I'm afraid the waves are high, the thunder is crashing, the lightning is crashing, but this time I'm going to respond and say, Jesus, you are not participating in this alone. I will walk with you. I will talk with you. Because the God in Matthew 8 is the same God in Matthew 14 and your relationship with God will make you realize that he was the same God that brought me out of the valley of the shadow of death. He was the same God that raised the dead. He was the same God that made the lepers well. He was the same God that made the blind see and you must testify to this that Father you are the same God. Let us be like Peter. Matthew 8 I was scared. Matthew 14, Jesus, I'm walking with you.
because the problem why you never end up growing up is because you respond to the problems the same thing year after year. Same problems, different face, but your response remains the same. If you've seen God in one season and you responded that way and God told you, you have little faith, you better show you're growing. You better show you're maturing because in the next season, God, I am walking with you. Because I've seen you do it before. I've seen you do it before. But I'm telling you here, the rain is needed for your growth. Say the rain is needed for my growth. But the enemy will send thunder for intimidation. Because more people fail because of fear. We've been focusing so much on the thunder and the fear instead of the rain that is growing us. Because fear will kill your harvest more than failure ever has. Fear will make you stay in a place longer than the process ever will. Fear has burgled more destinies than taking risks ever has. Because it's not what it's not you hold it's not what's holding you back, it's what you think you are not that's holding you back. And let's look at Hebrews 6 verse 1. Hebrews 6 verse 1. So let us stop going over basic teachings about Christ again and again. Let us go on instead and become mature in our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from the evil deeds and placing our faith in God. God is saying you should grow because God wants us to have many used to's instead of still do's. I'm going to say it again. God wants us to have a testimony of I used to and not I still do. Because God is a God of progression. God is a God of growth. God is a God of progress. God says, son and daughter, I don't want perfection. I want progress. He says, I don't want you to struggle with the things you struggled with 10 years ago. You can't still be on the same level. Because I can't go over these things again and again and again and again. If you experience a storm in Matthew 8, you are going to experience another storm. But first time son and daughter because of your growth because of your maturity because you are planted and rooted in me you will not respond the same hey your posture and the way you go through the storm will also tell you about stewardship why there is a blessing in every lesson you don't realize this it's not just how you steward good things it's also how you steward the storm because Peter at that moment understood that the, the way I stewarded the storm before was not the way God wanted it. Because he said, hey, you of little faith. And the second time he stewarded the storm is when he came, he said, ha ha, rabasha, come Jesus. If that is you and you must understand, Jesus never called Peter out onto the water. Peter looked at Jesus and he looked at him and said, if that is you, Lord, I am coming. I am coming. Because you must understand there's a blessing in every lesson. You must see yourself as a seed. That's where you see yourself right now. But God, when he looks at you, Cavalli sees a forest. Come on, somebody. Because the enemy is not fighting you in your seed form. The enemy is fighting you from a position of what he sees you as a forest. Ellie, can you just put on that forest for me there? Because some of you are looking at yourself from a seed, but God is looking at you from the perspective of a forest. And the same way God can look at you, the enemy also understands your future because he had a peek into your future. And where you just see a seed right now, God and the enemy sees a forest. No wonder the enemy is trying to stop you prematurely and you keep allowing him because of immaturity. Heaven and hell don't see you as a seed. They see you as a forest. And you know what's powerful about this? The next picture of the pine cone. This entire forest came from that. Because the interesting thing about this cone is the fact that these cones can stay on a pine tree for 14 years. 14 long years. But when the cone opens up like there, there's a time where the cone closes in. Because the, co the cone doesn't want things that is cold and unnecessary. And sometimes you and me need to be in the place where we must shut off to some of the things that the enemy tries to throw at us. Because you want to be open to everything. But God is saying not everything is just for you. Stop listening to 10,000 preachers and all of this. Open up your Bible and you start reading that instead of reading inspirational quotes on Facebook all day. Because you'll end up reading more quotes and statuses than what you read my word. The Bible says you must open yourself up to the word, not to these things. But when I'm looking at you, the pine cone comes in and the only time it opens up is when it's humid and when it's hot. 
And then what happens when it's hot? The pine tree opens up and it lets drop this cones. Because why? So that the seeds can blow away. When the seeds start blowing away, that tree now starts manifesting itself. Because even if a squirrel comes, the seeds are busy manifesting. Even when trauma comes, the seeds are manifesting. Even when trouble comes, the seeds is manifesting. And I'm here to announce to you this morning, family, that when you are experiencing rain, rain season is graduation season. Are you standing on this word this morning? Are you believing this word this morning? This is a prophetic word to you right now, that your raining season right now is your graduation season. Why? Natural graduation. You get up, you get a cap and a gown. Spiritual graduation. You get up, you are in dirt and rain. Natural graduation. You walk across the stage. Spiritual graduation. Your walk becomes the stage. God wants your life to be a stage that reflects Him. Natural graduation comes with a degree. Spiritual graduation comes with adversity. Natural graduation gets you gifts. Spiritual graduation gets you oil. Natural graduation, you throw a cap. But spiritual graduation, you'll end up closing the gap because you now start seeing purpose that there is a gap between my seed season and my harvest season. And I'm speaking to someone this morning that you must Put yourself in the position where you say, Lord, I am embracing and enjoying the rain. How do you enjoy the rain? How do you enjoy the rain? Number one, remember His presence. Number two, this is required to cross over. Because the storm teaches you something a sermon can never. Number three, Remember the winds and the waves are only there for fear and intimidation, but it's the rain that we need. And you need to, com you need to say this to yourself. Father, send the rain. Lord, send the rain. The same God of the sunlight is also the same God of the rain. Both are there to mold me, but you've got to also declare to yourself that, Father God, I am built different because God has packaged you in a unique way where he understands what is possessed in the seed that you carry because he says for son and daughter you are breaking ground and he's saying son and daughter you are breaking ground you must be in the place where you can count it all joy hallelujah count it all joy through trials and tribulation because where the enemy thinks he's sending the rain for your downfall he doesn't even understand he's busy watering your roots come on somebody he doesn't understand he's busy building in you the nutrients needed to withstand the next battle. Because when he comes in and sends the same battle with the same, with a different face in the same place, then you will be able to identify it and say, no, I'm not going to fall for the same storm trick again. This time I'm responding different. Jesus, how do you want me to respond in faith? I am walking on water. I'm not just in the place where I'm just going to allow it. I am walking on water. I am built different. I've got the DNA of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords within me. I've got the DNA of a God that, has no, that hasn't lost anything. I've got the Messiah within me. I've got resurrection power within me. I am built differently. You've got to declare it over yourself this morning and say, I am built differently. Say, I am built differently. Because the same God in Matthew 8 is the same God in Matthew 14. I am built differently differently you must say it and speak it over yourself because the enemy will end up messing with you over and over again the rain is necessary 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 I said the rain is necessary. 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 Say, Lord, I need your rain. Say, Lord, I need your rain. Say, Lord, I need your rain. Because the rain is necessary. Don't run away from it. Remain planted. Remain rooted. 
Because without the rain, you can't grow. <laughs> without the rain, you can't produce fruit. Because suffering and hardships and trials and tribulation actually mold and bring in you and birth in you Jesus Christ Himself. Because the Bible says, as Jesus has suffered in this world, so you will suffer. So the rain is necessary. You must be in the place when you see something coming, you must start smiling, Mr. Shen. And say, ha, 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 I get you all seen, Jay. Do you think it's dumb? Fayant, I can you let you have Fayant, I can you let you. Fayant, I can you let you. Fayant, I can you stop you. I've seen this before. You must be in the place where you can identify the filthy tricks of the enemy over and over again. And when you look at it, you look at it head first and you just laugh. Ha, 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 ha. I don't know, sometimes I think the devil laughs like it. Ha, ha. Ah, ah, ah. You look at the devil and you start laughing in his face because it's old tricks, man. He doesn't understand. Rene, the trouble he just sent now, he's in deeper trouble because you are even going to be more motivated. Because what the breaking cause now God will make in you something greater than what you were before. Because before he brought this trouble, you were impatient. But now that he brought the trouble, you are even more patient. Am I speaking to someone? Before the trouble... You got angry really fast. But after the trouble and the molding, you are now slow to anger. Whoo, Rabbah. Before the trouble, you struggled being kind to people. But now after the trouble, you extend kindness because you understand grace in a different way. Because you understand I can also fall. And therefore, I need to give because I also fell and I must also be gracious. Rabbah, sa. Am I speaking to someone? I said before the trouble, you were just bad. But now that the enemy thought he, he thought, he thought. But what he, what, what we thought was going to break you. God was actually just humble you because you were proud and now you fell. But then you don't understand. The Bible says that God exalts the... <sighs> I was seeing it this morning. The enemy thought he's breaking you to make you humble, but he didn't understand that the humility in you was now God's opportunity to lift you up even higher than the level where you were at before. That's why I'm saying the rain is necessary. That's why I'm saying count it all joy. You think you're going to send sickness my way? I've smelt this before, man. I've experienced this before. I'm not going to respond to it in the same way by acting fearful. Guess what I'm going to do? Devil, right now, I'm going to go and take a nap. I'm going to sleep on it. Why? Jesus done the exact same thing. When the storm was there, the Bible says Jesus went and take, took a nap. Because I've seen this before. I'm not going to allow myself to suffer the same way. I'm not going to allow myself to go through the same anxiety as before. Because I've seen this before. And I'm going to respond different. I'm going to take a nap. Father, this is in your hands. Father, whatever was thrown my way, this is in your hands. Because I've seen this before. And the enemy doesn't understand that God is even using him on God's plan. God is setting up the devil in a sewer. He thought he would come in and allow the disciples to die and allow the disciples and bring chaos. But he did not understand, Elder Daniel, that, hey, it's all part of God's master plan. He thought he was going to bring death into your family, but he did not understand that that death awakened something in you. That you are now in the place where you are not going to allow people to go to hell without receiving salvation. He thought he was bringing poverty into your family, but you understood something else. Because you've grown and you've seen the lesson. And that there's a blessing in every single lesson. The rain is necessary. I said the rain is necessary. I said the rain is necessary. Those who are online, I said the rain is necessary. I'm going to count it all joy. Pastor Laverno, I'm going to count it all joy. I'm saying the rain is necessary. Let the rain come. Uncle Mel, let the rain come. What is meant for my destruction... God's going to turn it around for my good. God's going to turn it around for my good. Wherever we are right now, just lift up your hands. And I want us just to... Father, I pray right now, as this word was ministered, Lord, that your spirit, Father God, will just come and rest upon each and every single person's shoulders right now this morning. That they may have a perspective change, Father God, behind the inside work that you are actually doing. Behind the master plan that you are actually bringing. Where some storms may be caused because of their rebellion. 
May they also see the blessing and the lesson out of that storm. But where the storm is brought by you because of their obedience, may they see the blessing therein as well, Father. I pray that they may be a people, Father God, that does not turn away from adversity. That they may be a people with a backbone to stand up strong. And whenever adversity, trials, and tribulation comes their way, that they may count it all joy. That they may understand that the rain is necessary. Because where the enemy thought is bringing death and destruction, Father God, you brought life and life in abundance. And this morning I speak a perspective change over their lives right now. That you are doing an inside job. You are molding them, Father God. You are changing them from the inside out. You are allowing the fruit of your Holy Spirit, Father God, to mend their thought patterns right now. I speak new thought patterns over their lives right now. I speak maturity over their lives right now. I speak perspective over their lives right now. I speak longevity over their lives right now. I speak your spirit over their minds right now. Give them a sound mind. Give them a peep into their future this morning, Father. That they may understand the inside job that you are doing and have been doing all along. And I pray that they may remain planted in you. That they may remain stationed in you. That they may remain in a place, Father God, where your living waters can water them, Father God. From the inside out, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, family, if you believe that, just say amen this morning. Just say, if you believe it, just give the Lord a shout of praise this morning. If you believe it, just thank the Lord this morning. Come on, we're saying thank the Lord for the rain. We're saying thank Jesus for the rain. We say thank you, Father, for the rain. Showers of blessing. Hallelujah.